today we are making banana bread. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. Simon, he's going to talk to us uh, about why we're making banana bread and he's going to walk us through it. Um, so yeah, over to you, Simon, sure. to tell us a little bit about banana bread and why have you chosen this dish today? Um, well, I understand there's a lot of people um, at home now and uh, it's, it's appeared to be a very popular uh, search uh, that people would like to make banana bread at home. Uh, it's also a really uh, versatile uh, bake. It's, it's very easy and um, forgiving, I would say. Yeah. Forgiving? What does that mean? <laughs> like, if you can <laughs> Meaning, uh, if you make a mistake, uh, you're still going to end up with a really, really nice, tasty cake. Okay, great. And how long will it take us today? It should only be around 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, yeah. okay. 10 to 15 minutes. So if you've got some bananas, you're not quite sure what to do with them. Uh, this is a great uh, and quick recipe, so yeah, what's first? Okay, well essentially it's, um, it's quite easy in that it's dry ingredients and wet ingredients. That's it. So we're going to start with the wet ingredients uh, and I'll um, talk, talk through that and then we'll mix that in with the flour and then the banana. Okay. And then it's in the oven. Okay. Yeah. So. Wet ingredients. <laughs> wet ingredients. Okay. Well, for the viewer, we actually pre-mixed the, um, the first ingredients, which is butter, sugar, and cream of some sort. So I've used mascarpone because it's got a really nice fat content, but you could use like um, creme fraiche or a thick Greek yogurt. Um, and what I've done is it's, uh, I can give you the measurements now. It's um, uh, with the yogurt, it's 80 grams. Uh, the sugar is 150, and this, the sugar is soft brown sugar. So it's, it's this really nice, soft, rich, um, almost like a Demira, but um, it's, it's got that depth, that, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, um, molasses -y flavor. Okay. Um, so that gets mixed in with the butter and the cream. And the reason you do that is because you want volume. So you can see here... I can, but show them. Yeah, <laughs> so you can see here that mixing this, this room temperature butter and the sugar, uh, what it does is the sugar breaks down and it puts air into the mix. So uh, you get this nice volume and that helps hold up the cake when you're baking it. And how long did you mix this together for? It's quite a while. So I've used the, um, the attachment on the stand mixer, being the whisk balloon attachment, and this, and this was four minutes, around four minutes. Now you can use a hand mixer, uh, you know, just a normal one at home, but it will take a bit longer. But really what you're looking for is something like, like this. And look, it can split. So if you use Greek yogurt or creme fraiche, it might not have this volume, but it doesn't matter. It's still going to make a delicious bake. When you say split, what, it comes apart? Yeah, it kind of, it, it, see, you can see this is all nice and uniform, but it might be a bit more gra grainy and granular. Okay. Yeah, but it's still going to work, so don't worry. Okay, can yeah. we try some? Yeah, sure. Okay. Great. <laughs> I'm going to have a little bit. Now, when I was uh, growing up, this is always the best bit. When my mum used to make a cake, I'd get the mix. Fantastic. And it's been a long time since I had banana bread. Um, so I'm really looking forward to this. When was the last time that you uh, had some banana bread, Simon? Well, quite recently, but I remember my grandma made it all the time. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great because it can sit for a few days, and you know, so it stays moist. And, and you can make various densities. Like you can make one that's a little more bready and less sweet. And that's really good if you want to keep it uh, to toast and because it's really yummy. Put some butter on it. Okay. Well, this one actually is a bit more moist and, um, and dense. So... Probably not perfect for toasting, but certainly after a few days it will be. Okay, yeah. so let's, yeah. we've mixed it, what happens next? Yeah, so we've got the mix, so um, then it's important to put the eggs in. And um, with the eggs, a tip I have here is that you might, it's best, to, rather than just break them in when it's mixing, or with the hand mixer, is to mix it first in a bowl and gradually add it. Because that's another thing that can go wrong if you just tip it all in, it might, it might break this uh, nice volume that we have here. So. Okay. I'll do that now. Okay, so this is the AEG Home Cooking. We're learning how to make uh, banana bread. Um, and I have to say that the mix that I tasted was absolutely delightful. It almost tasted alcoholic in a way. Is that the sugar? Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. that deep, yeah. That deep brown sugar. Yeah, that mm. was fantastic. Oh, and it's not alcoholic, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And is there anything uh, which is now about the flour? What if I'm, um, say, gluten intolerant? Um, sure, yeah, there's, this is another great recipe where you can have a lot of substitutes. So, um, and, and even, you know, if you're short on plain white flour, you can use wholemeal flour. You, could, you can really be flexible with the ingredients. Um, but yes, if you're gluten intolerant, you could use, or vegan, you can use the, um, the chickpea water in place of eggs. You can use chia, you can use a number of different things to substitute the, the ingredients. So I'm just going to mix this in here with my hand because um, to save the viewers uh, with the loud machine. So I'll just do that here. Actually, Tom, you might want to hold this if that's possible because <laughs> we're not using the machine. Yeah, sure. And how long will this take? Well, this is this is all you want to do is just get the mix into the get the eggs into the mix. So it doesn't take long at all. If you were using a mixer or a hand mixer, it'd be a matter of seconds. Okay. Yeah. Two eggs. So that's almost in. I probably should have done it a little more gradually, but it's worked. So they're now in. And now this is also the, the time where you would add your flexible ingredients. So, you know, walnuts are fantastic. Uh, maybe almonds, any, any nuts, um, sunflower seeds. I'm going to use coconut. Okay, and why yeah. are you using coconut? Oh, just because it's, it's, it's got that rich oiliness that when it, when it cooks in, adds even more moisture to the bake, so it's really nice. Okay. Yeah, and it adds a great flavor. I mean, banana and coconut are really good together. So we've got the butter, cream, and the sugar mixed. The eggs have gone in, and now is when I'll put the coconut. And if I had any other type of ingredient, like nuts you mentioned that, would I add those now as well, all at the That's same right. time? Okay. Yeah, so that, so, and fruit, for example, or chocolate chips, they also go in about now. So I yeah. shouldn't add those first. Uh, is it very important that I, you said that this is very forgiving, but mm. there has to be some sort of um, order, is that right? Yeah, really it's just wet and then, and then dry. Okay. So now that, um, and then finally the banana. All right. Banana's the last, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I guess you can't have a banana bread without the banana. Banana, no, okay. yeah. Is there anything special about this coconut or any of the ingredients? Can you pick these up from regular stores? Or yeah, no, 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 all very common ingredients, okay. yeah. Right. So if you are just joining us, this is the AG Home Cooking. If you have any questions for Simon about making uh, a banana bread, uh, any of the type of things that you personally want to see in it, then please drop us a note and we'll pass those on and get back to you. So, yeah, thanks. Uh, Another important thing to mention when making the banana bread is that the bananas are really nice and ripe. Um, it can even be riper than this. You know those really ugly bananas that are kind of sitting at home that, that you, no one might want to peel and eat themselves? <laughs> they're perfect. And the reason for that is they're sweeter and um, they also have got more banana flavour. So they're perfect. So it's a really great way to use up the bananas at home. In yeah. fact, Actually, I did a little bit of research uh, before we came to make this banana bread, and according to a reliable source on the internet, this was first brought into home production in the 1930s with people who exactly didn't want to throw away ripe bananas. They were looking for something to combine it into a, a sweet dish. So banana bread was born in the 1930s, and it's been popular ever since. And I remember making it at school, and I'm really looking forward to trying this one with your added ingredients. I don't think I've had it with coconut before, so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and the other ingredient I've added to make it just a little twist is a spice, cardamom. Uh, you could also use cinnamon. Um, but I love cardamom and banana together, so, so that is also mixed in, and I'll show you that with the dry ingredients. Okay, and you're just mashing these, this is a regular masher, yeah. you're mashing the banana, okay. Yeah, so if they're ripe, they're going to be really soft. You could even use a fork, you don't need a masher. We've got this lovely masher here, so that's perfect. But, and you don't want to take it too far, you just want to take it enough that they, they kind of release a bit of liquid, okay. they're no longer dry. So you'll see in like really fast, this is now quite wet. And you don't want it to be too, um, too broken up either because you want the chunks to taste the banana in the cake. Yeah. So that's ready. So now we have dry ingredients. Now that's just um, 150 grams of flour. 
uh, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and the cardamom, which I talk, just talked about. So we'll get those in. We actually have a question. Okay. A question. Excellent. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Daniel. His question is, can the bananas ever be too ripe? Is it possible to have too ripe bananas? Is, when the, is there something wrong with the flavor if they're too ripe or is that impossible? Yeah, I've because... never taken them that far to be honest. But um, yeah, I think when you come to a point, if you picked up the banana and the, the skin kind of fell away, that's too ripe. <laughs> okay. But if it's holding form and uh, even though it's quite black on the outside, I think they're perfect. Okay, yeah. great. Well, but maybe Daniel can try this at home and see how long you know, he can make a banana last before he decides to incorporate it into his dish. That would be great. So this is a teaspoon and a half of cardamom going in, ground cardamom. If you had the seeds, you could break them up with a mortar and pestle and use those too. Um, or like I said, you could use cinnamon. And then also a teaspoon and a half of baking powder. And what, does the, what do these ingredients do? Why, why should I use those in my... Well, the baking powder is um, important to give the rise in the cake. Yeah. I keep thinking we're baking one, but we're not. We've got it here. Have it here. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the spice is obviously for the flavour. Yeah. Yeah. So you just need to mix those together. And that was super quick. Super quick. Okay. You just want to get the, the, the soda th uh, baking powder through and the spice through. And it's ready to add into here. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then the banana, and then and then we're going to line a tin with baking paper. So I'll get that ready. So we kind of want that to be good. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to use again. If you were using this stand mixer, you, the flour would go in just for a quick second, just to get it through. Or if you're using a hand whisk, the same. But um, because all we really want to do is get this through evenly. If you would over whisk this, the gluten in the flour makes it a bit tough and doughy. So you don't want to mix it in too much. How do you know how do you know if you've mixed it in too much? It'll go a bit like claggy. Okay. You know, like if it's you sometimes hard to mix. Yeah, and okay. like almost like a mashed potato. If you over whip the mashed potato it can also go like that. Okay, we have another question from Johannes. Thank you so much. Uh, you've got bananas. Are there any other sort of fruits that you could make this uh, this bread with? Sure. Yeah, I actually think pears are perfect for a banana bread recipe because they've got like a ripe pear has got a similar texture and um, and great flavour. So and they're a bit softer than apples, for example. So I, I've actually quite often made pear bread. Yeah. Pear and banana, or just pear? Just pear. Just pear. Yeah. Could yeah. you combine them? Yeah, you could. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very flexible, this recipe, unlike a lot of baking recipes, like I said, quite forgiving. Quite forgiving. Yeah. Don't you have an anecdote about... <laughs> yeah, that I, I recently heard. Um, yeah, that you can relate baking... Um, if, if you're referencing music, you can relate baking to classical, because there's no deviation, whereas home cooking and cooking in the restaurants, a bit more jazz. Okay, so you can ad-lib <laughs> can... freestyle. Ad-lib, exactly, yeah. So that was really easy, and that, that's already combined. Put some on you. Obviously, it'd be much easier with a mixer, but that's in. And then straight in with the banana. So again, it's just a gradual mix through. I'm going to use the spatula for that. And how long are you going to mix this? Really just until it's combined. So I'll show the camera what we want at the end. Okay, this is the, uh, the AEG Home Cooking. We're making a banana bread. Uh, apparently you can make it with pears as well. We've added uh, coconut, but you can add lib. You can add whatever you want in terms of nuts uh, to personalize your own tastes. If you have any questions for us or anything you'd like to know from Simon, our chef, please don't hesitate to write in. And I also say that this is going out live in Russia, Greece, uh, the Nordics, uh, Spain, in the UK so thank you for joining us so now would be great to add uh, some nuts or chocolate chips as well you could just stir them through because that's ready this is the perfect um, consistency that you would like to have so a bit more go down a bit yeah perfect Are you seeing that in the camera yeah. excellent okay 
So now we're going to prepare the tin. And I might get you a help here. Yeah, sure. We're going to take this out. Now, just a quick tip. My wife told me the other day, actually. <laughs> when using baking paper, you can cut it and get it all nice and perfect. But a nice way is to punch it. And you get more flexibility with how you're going to lay it out. Uh -huh. Yeah, so. Why did she learn that? I'm not sure, actually. But she told me it helped. So it's really good to... Now it's easier to shape and not slipping everywhere. Okay. And it looks rusty. It, it looks, looks rusty. rusty. Yeah, you don't need to have it perfect. No. Okay. Uh, if I only had a round form, mm. could I use that? Or do I have to have a, a long uh, form like this? It is best to have a long form because it makes for a more even cooking. Okay. But uh, you could use a round like a normal cake. It's just going to, you're going to end up with the middle of the cake being a little less cooked than the, um, the outside. Okay. And that's because it's quite a wet mix because of the fruit. So that's why loaf tins are quite commonly used. Okay. It's a more even cooking. So in with the uh, mixture. And this fix, fits that form Perfectly. Is there going to be any left? Yeah. They, no, I think it's a good size for this form. Okay. What if yeah. I had any left? What could I could I keep it in the fridge? Or uh, I think you'd want to bake it quite soon. But okay. yeah, you could make a muffin, put it in a muffin tin, some small yeah. small amounts. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a good tip as well, right? If you're making um, muffins, they become quite dry. But this, because it's got the fruit in it, will retain the moisture. Yeah. This right. is really good for making muffins as well. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to use this up here. Um, I might borrow your, your um, towel there, Tom. Sure. So what I'm going to do is just to get it even. Just, just another give tip. It a, just to give it a tap. Ah, yeah. okay. <laughs> so that's it. That's quite nice and level. Doesn't need to be perfect. Um, but it's just nice and even now. You can see here. The bacon. Okay, we have another question, and this yes. is great. Please keep them coming. This is perfect. Thank you. Now, uh, we've used this brown sugar here. Yeah. What if we've only got white at home? Would that work? That's fine. Totally fine. Yeah. It'll, it, the flavor won't be as, um, as deep, but um, it's perfect to use that. Even if you had, like, icing sugar and you're running low on white sugar, you could, you could like, combine those and... And use them, no problem. So yeah. the, the difference in the taste, because when I tasted mm. that mix, it tasted almost like rum. In yeah, a way. exactly. Yeah, yeah. But so you won't we'll get just, that. No, you won't. Right. It won't. Won't be that flavour. But um, still, it's um, it's going to make a really nice bread. Okay. Yeah. And if I was at home and I was making a number of these, mm. I bake them. Could I freeze it afterwards? Can I freeze it yeah, for later? I think it yeah. would freeze quite well. This. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That was a question from Johannes, so thank you so much. If you have any other questions, um, then please send them in, and we will do our best to answer them. And uh, what's the next step? <laughs> well, I'm just going to give it uh, a nice garnish decoration on top. Um, one's just for looks, and the other one's for flavour, because uh, first I'm going to start with the banana. So just indicating it's a banana cake or banana bread. So I like to just put a, a nice thin strip across the top. Is this essential? Not essential, no. but um, it's a nice garnish. So uh, yeah, you're right. People will know it's a banana bread. There's a, <laughs> there's a, <laughs> there's a, an obvious visual clue. Sure. Yeah. So I'll just show, I've just carved a banana there and done some long, long slits. And um, you can see that there. And I'm also going to use some brown sugar. And this, oh, actually, I'll go first with the coconut. That just gives some nice toasted coconut on top. Also telling you what's in the bake. <laughs> and again, could I add any other anything else at this stage? Or is coconut kind of the, the optimal ingredient? Oh, you could definitely use some chopped nuts. Yep. Yeah, that would work really well. Because they'll toast a bit nicer if they're on the top rather than in the bake. Because you get a different, different flavor. Yeah. And then the, the, just the extra bit of sugar, that's just, that should melt down. You can see in the finished one here, it's just melted a little and given a nice sweet crust on top. 
So that's it. That's ready. And then you put it in the oven? Yeah, so the oven is preheated to 180. Uh, just your standard temperature, 180 Celsius. This is a fan, right? Fan oven. Yeah, yeah, that's on fan. And uh, it'll bake for around one hour. Yeah. And the way to check... Oh, I can just show it. Let's go over here. The way to check that it's um, ready at the end is um, that you put a cake tester in. Right in the middle. Cake tester? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what is a cake tester? Cake tester is like a small straight pin that goes into the middle. And if you pull it out, there shouldn't be any of the batter on it. So could I use you a knife? You could use a knife. You could yeah. use a knife, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a cake tester. Yes, right. I thought testing cakes was eating it. But, <laughs> and I'm happy to do that. <laughs> so that's now in for one hour, um, but we did make this one before filming, so we might just serve that up, um, have a look inside, see what it's like. Okay, so this, yeah. this particular cake was made, what, one hour ago? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and another thing that's important is when it comes out of the oven, um, it, it's best to leave it to cool down in the tin just so it keeps its shape. Yeah. Until it's completely cold? Do I have to wait until I serve it? Half an hour. It's pretty hard to wait because of the smell. Yeah. I mean, you can smell it in here now. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, if you can resist the temptation to cut into it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hold together better and it'll keep better as well. Because if you cut it open while it's still warm, you're going to release all the steam and uh, it'll end up drying up a bit inside. So it's better to let it cool down in its own shell. So this is actually, you can still feel it's quite warm, but... Um, it would, ideally, this would be like another probably 15, 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, so it's looking really nice. Okay, we have another question. Um, mm. Somebody has a steam oven, an oven with a steam function on it. Could they cook with steam? Would that work? Oh, to be honest, I haven't baked with steam. I think it could, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think the moisture would be okay. Um, yeah, I. I Actually, mm. I, <laughs> I've baked with steam, and You've yes, done it. yeah, you okay, can, you oh, can, excellent. Absolutely. And the great thing about baking with steam is that you get the rise yeah. and the fluffiness of the texture, so you get the exterior, which is crispy, and the rise. So, yes, you absolutely could bake it with steam. Oh, excellent. So, together, oh, we've, we've, we've come to a positive. So, yeah, you can bake it with steam. Um, it's also forgiving when you bake it with steam, it's harder to get it to, to overcook it, yeah, or to yeah. burn the top, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. oh, that's yeah. great, yeah. And I imagine there is quite a bit of steam in here already just because of the wet mixture, so yeah. that makes sense. Okay. I have to say this smells absolutely fantastic, and mm. we're nearing the end of this uh, relatively short AG cooking. We've made banana bread. Um, it has real smells of um, caramelized sugar, the banana, the fruit, and it smells absolutely fantastic. Um, and I didn't have uh, any lunch, so I'm really looking forward to, <laughs> to trying this. It's, I, I, I'm actually, you know, I'm really having restraint here to, to stop from dying again. <laughs> we are so, about to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what's, what are you serving it with? What's this? I, I wanted to make this a little, little more inviting, so I've, what I've done is I've made a mascarpone, uh, espresso mascarpone uh, cream here. So it's really simple, it's just mascarpone with uh, a shot of espresso that's been chilled. Uh, and just mix through. And I'm just going to serve that on the side like that. And then also I toasted some coconut just to give some more nutty flavour and I'm just going to use that as a garnish. And where did you get the shot of espresso from? Like a local store? Or did you have a coffee machine? Or... Yeah, if you have one at home, yeah. you can uh, just make your own. Or um, even if you have like a drip, you could just make a really strong coffee. Yeah. So you can see mascarpone's quite... Um, Thick to start with, but with a little mixture through it, it's, it's quite a nice, beautiful cream texture now. And there's a little bit of sugar in there too. Okay. Yeah. So that's ready to try. Please dig in. <laughs> okay, I will. So this is um, very fresh out of the oven half an hour ago. I mean, it looks absolutely fantastic. I mean, we can mm. show this yeah. the way that we've cut into it. I don't know whether you can see this, but it. One hour, and it, it yeah, it looks. Um, oh, and you cut in. There was a crispiness to it. Yeah, definitely on top. Yeah, yeah. the crispy. The, the great thing is about the the sugar. It provides you know it caramelized. It had a it provides crispiness. And then there's a piece of banana here, some coconut, 
So you, I'm looking forward to enjoying um, the variety of texture, especially with this mascarpone and coffee cream. So now I'm going to try it. Mm. Yeah, it's really nice texture. And it, again, it smells absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Winner, excellent. <laughs> Never speak with my mouth full, sorry. <laughs> Something I've been brought out with, but absolutely fantastic. Oh, great. A real mix of texture, that mascarpone added to it. Yeah, absolutely, and what, 15 minutes to prepare? Really quick, yeah, really, really quick. easy. A great way of using up your old bananas, although they don't have to be old, but it really helps if yeah. your bananas are ripe to mash them in. Um, you could use pear, you could add nuts. The great thing about this mix is there's such a variety of things that you can do with it. Uh, check out your cupboard, see maybe you've got some chopped almonds or something that you want to add into it. And as you said at the beginning, it's such a forgiving dish that you can't really go wrong with it, especially if you make it with steam, but you, that's not necessary. It's really great to come together with all of these ingredients that you have lying around at home and add a little bit of panache with the mascarpone and the, the coffee. So. Mm. What I really like about this are the mix of ingredients um, and you get a taste of something that is completely new, the way that you've added it, but everything is totally accessible. I love it. I'm definitely going to try it. Simon, thank you so much. Thanks, Tom. Perfect. Thanks, viewers. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Try it, like it, perhaps tell us what you thought about it and join us next week where we have another AEG Home Cooking. Thanks so much and um, yeah, enjoy your weekend and see you next time. Bye.